What's up, Mari? I've been telling you all day, but I'm super impressed by you, really. Too kind. It's so cool to finally meet you, really. Likewise, Nori. It's so cool. You're amazing. And you're the first person that I've done a cover with and a cover period. So I've been learning a lot today. Everything you played in piano was just so amazing. Oh, I mean, thank you. Just by the way, we're like here, you know, jamming together, you know, sharing a lot of knowledge to each other together. And it's just so amazing to share a little bit of, you know, performance time together with you. We were talking a little bit about like coming up with like this chord melody situation. So to me, if I could give you a, like a quick example, I mean, let's just say we're talking about a cover, right? So mm -hmm. there's this cover that I did of um, the BG song, How Deep Is Your Love? So the first thing that I do, I, I, I'm, you know, I try to recognize the melody, I identify the melody. So let's just, you know, How Deep Is Your Love in key of E major. <laughs> That could be already like a video or, you know, like a, a start of it. But then what I'm, where my mind goes, it's just like I start building up, stacking up like more melodic sounds with it. So instead of just playing what I just did, I could have done like. <laughs> And then you just like start so. messing around with different things. I love messing yeah. around with like chords and feels and you know for example because like when I play this you know so like those little things are definitely like um, um, influences from Jimi Hendrix, John Frusciante, John Mayer like all mm -hmm. these guys you know helped me a lot to build this sort of like personality when it comes uh -huh. to like my playing because uh, I always bring Jimi Hendrix on the table I think he was one of the most revolutionary guitar players electric guitar players because when he played rhythm mm -hmm. guitar it was actually not a hundred percent rhythm all the time you know like one thing is just like that's rhythm guitar but Jimmy would always like I mean not always like who am I to try to copy what he did but it was something like so he was always mixing up things mm -hmm. so that's a concept that for sure he did not think and make any theory about oh yeah that's what I'm gonna do it was he was born with it, mm -hmm. you know? So that style really changed my, you know, point of view. And I mentioned about Jimmy and then John Frusciante and John Mayer because those three guys, of course, there was so many other players, but those three uh, guitar players were the ones that I always found that sort of approach mm -hmm. and really, you know, made me feel like so excited about, you know? Even just what you played, I have so many questions in terms of the timing of where you ornament. I don't know if that's the best word mm -hmm. uh, to use, but how you add in extra, like a flourish, because it's, as a classically trained pianist, yeah. it's not something that I would immediately go to. Like mm. if someone would say, take that melody uh -huh. and, um, you know, do a variation on it, as okay. they would call it. Uh -huh. um, I would, I think I would focus more on the front end, which is not right for the style. Okay. And so when I hear 
um, you elaborating on it. I'm just wondering, is that just something that occurred naturally over time because you have the language in your ear so much? Mm -hmm. Or do you have a system in terms of at, at these spots, mm. between these chords, mm -hmm. I'm going to add a little more like the tension mm, chords, wow. am I going to use that as okay. a flourish point? Or it's just all unconscious? I actually never thought much about, okay, when is the appropriate time? I think it depends a lot on the rhythm. Because again, there's this song of Jimi Hendrix, um, Little Wing. And it, it has like this sort of like ballad groove. So like for situations where it's more like a slow mid-tempo, mm -hmm. groovy um, sort of rhythm, it fits really well. The first step would definitely be like the groove. Mm -hmm. If the, the tempo of the song, you know, if the balance, the rhythm fits for that mm -hmm. sort of like feels, then it fits very well, you know, like, um, so the little wing thing, it's more like, um, <laughs> if I was playing like a hardcore mm -hmm. groove, you know, it wouldn't fit in the same kind of mm -hmm. feel. So it, it kind of, first thing, I have to analyze the song and uh, see if it, the groove is right to play that kind of stuff, you know. So that's the first um, step that I always take. And from that on, it's more about like this, the, the being sensitive enough to understand where to find the, the right spots. Again, it's more about trying things and mm -hmm. see like, oh yeah, this feels in the, this feels good in mm -hmm. this kind of space, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a Red Hot Chili Peppers song by John Frusciante, so it's just like. like you give them the note the reference like the root mm -hmm. and then you add a, a little flavor like a little feel so it's like note feel note feel and so on you know like so I, people need to understand where the direction is going you know? so if it makes sense to add an extra feel or a longer or a short feel you do it you know uh -huh. but the most essential essential thing is to you know notice them that okay there's a note behind you know like a chord progression behind i, would I say. think that's a perfect explanation yeah i think you just nailed it just because <laughs> and as it also makes sense to me because again going back to how i hear how you build solos and just your arrangements uh -huh. they're always clear there's like a clear depth of field where i know wow. where we are it's, mm. like, it's very comforting wow. and you keep the things that are uh, maybe not part of the song vocal wise mm -hmm. on a different plane mm. so with, it, with your tone or with mm. the way that you're picking. Wow, that's cool. And so it's <laughs> so, it's so, um, the shape of it well, thank is you. always refined. And, and I think that's why it sounds organic mm -hmm. and tasteful. <laughs> it's very tasteful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And I, that was something that, again, I did not think much of it, but I've always wanted to be able to play guitar by myself. And again, I mean, of course, every guitar player could actually do that, but in a way that could be still entertaining. <laughs> so everything, now that you're bringing this up, um, back in the days, I, I didn't have like a software, like, you know, to record myself or to make a production, like a drum machine, things like that. 
And so like, because of that circumstance, it kind of made me to feel like, okay, how can I make this work in a way that I could play a guitar piece, but people, not only guitar players mm -hmm. would, you know, feel like, oh, this is, this is nice, you know what I'm saying? So that, like little by little, mm -hmm. I start thinking in ways of incorporating those things and in a more theoretical way, like, it was very important for me to know like the inversions, those triads and, you know, mastering the fretboard in a way that I could like, okay, in case if I want to play an F chord, I would be able to play this F chord in any sort of area of the neck, you know, like an F, uh, you know what I mean? Like, kind of stuff that kind of so all that helped me a lot to pro give the progress make the progress of this sort of like style it's amazing it's because you're not you. limited also by the I'm not odd, but as a pianist, it's kind of odd, the layout mm. of the guitar mm. and also the range. You kind yeah. of have to get creative with sometimes the you can't have that bass. So then That's you have true. To, yeah, you have to find a way to yeah. color the next chord. Mm -hmm. And you do it in such a seamless way that it's just like, oh. <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> it's so effortless. That's good. I mean, of course, I'm my background differently than yours is not relatable much into jazz even though i have a re huge respect i i would love to actually get more into that like, so i need your help i know for sure like jazz guitar players would be like yeah man i mean this is a very you know typical thing that we do all the time but because i was more like into the pop rock kind of thing so it's nice to um you know provide this sort of like the the richness of chords and mm -hmm. stuff so i just love that you know approach where i could still be able to play rhythm and solo at the same time you know what i mean so so would it be safe to say that your approach is kind of the anti-solo not differentiating them so much mm. but incorporating everything and then letting some bits shine as a uh, more soloistic moment. Hmm. I wouldn't say it's like an anti-solo approach because I still love, I mean, my the, the first bands that got me into like, okay, this is what I want to do, I want to play guitar, were very like hard rock, um, you know, prog rock, metal, so back in the 80s and the 90s so to me that's still like something that speaks to my heart so i love the actual like distorted sound and like fast notes um again it was more like the way i found you know appropriate mm. you know i um and speaking of my references there's this uh, band called mr big there was a big band in the 80s, like they were, they were like, I don't know, like hard rock, glam rock maybe. And there's one song of them called To Be With You, which the guitar player, Paul Gilbert, one of my favorite guitar players ever, um, he, the solo of that record, of that song, it's a very like harmonic, melodic solo, which has a lot of double stops. And uh, that was like a big, thing to me because the solo is something like this and that's actually the melody of the chorus of the songs and how and when I heard that solo for the first time I was just so you know mesmerized with it because again it's like dude he's playing the solo he's playing the melody of the solo but not in like a very guitar you know like it could have been like But he was playing more like <laughs> So 
So it's just so pretty. And but what I'm just trying to say was just like it's still a solo. You could hear like, okay, this is a guitar part. But on the other side, it was also like I can't actually understand the chords, where it's going and where it's not. So again, the man is not an island. It's I, there's always references for me to get from and be like, wow, this is amazing. I want to do that. And I, if so, maybe find my own path to this sort of approach. And a lot of people are doing that with your playing. They're like, maybe. They're yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Go to your comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, it's just, I just love mm. that for me. Like, I want to be in a situation that, okay, it's, it's just me and mm -hmm. my guitar mm -hmm. and still be able to play something where people be like, dude, this is cool, this mm -hmm. is different. Not only guitar players would be like, oh, yeah, man, that solo, that lick, whatever, was insane. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally. want, you know, like a regular person that don't know anything about guitar mm -hmm. and be like, this is interesting. And I feel like the more you could provi provide in terms of sound, and that yeah. involves melody, chords, whatever, you know, harmony. Timing. Timing. So everything counts, mm -hmm. you know? So that's what I try to do. What would a beginner slash intermediate musician do in terms of taking that and starting to build something on their instrument, on the piano or guitar? Mm -hmm. Maybe I think it would be super helpful to just walk through um, that process. Okay. And you mean that in a way of like just playing the song? Yeah, like I, I if you were to imagine, or I, d I imagine a beginner mm -hmm. pianist being like, okay, I understand the chords. Uh -huh. C major, E minor, yeah. F major. And then to break out of, I'm not going to play. Where would they start? Oh, because, to add yeah, the little nuances of it? A little bit. I mean, it, either as a soloist or okay. uh, with the supportive material. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think a lot of pianists or a lot of musicians could be stuck at just being like... Oh, just makes sense. Okay. You know, how do you yeah. go from... You know, to something a little more Got creative it. and more personal. Okay, um, well again, I think it's important to know first the foundation of the song. So mm -hmm. of course chords are mandatory. And the other thing I would probably love, I love doing it. It's not like to stay concentrated in on just one area of the, the neck. So I could, I always like to, you know, I use this exercise as a practice routine for me. Like, okay, in this situation of that song, it's just like C, E minor, F, and I'll start messing around with different um, inversions. So I'll probably be playing like. And the second round I'll be playing like. Just try it. And mess around with like adding like extension, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, maybe like, you know, because again, this is a regular C major. I already add like the seven on it because it sounds prettier, you know? So you start adding your little flavors on it. Mm -hmm. So in my situation, I love opening, like uh, opening chords. And when I mean opening chords here, you know, in a electric guitar concept, it's just using open strings. So the fact that I have an open G and an open E that I could use. So instead of just playing like this, I could play like as well. It just brings a different tonality or So I love messing around, you know, giving like the same like motif kind of thing, you know, mm. so. So messing around with the chords first would be like already a good novelty of comparing to. And also 
what we're both doing is finding a very simple sort of transition point from chord to chord yeah. that is kind of like a melody. Like yeah. uh -huh. It's sort of in the background yeah. um, and it, it softens up the chords a little more and then you have a little rhythm. Exactly. Now, let's say that we're taking these chords and as you do later on in the song, uh -huh. if you're going to elaborate on this, uh -huh. what's your approach? Like what, um, going back to the beginner, now they feel a little more comfortable with the chords. Uh -huh. How do they break from that to now building something more on top? So now that I'm already familiar with the chords and the variations that I could provide, you know, messing around with just the progression itself, I would probably start adding those little flavors mm -hmm. I played in the beginning where it would be like, where can I fit this? You know, like, because from C to E minor, it's already too fast, so maybe I'm not going to do that kind of stuff. But maybe, because when I played the F chord, extended a little longer, I could be able to do something like this, you know. <laughs> Then I add those little like feels. The feels. You know. Okay. You know, and then and then if I want to mess around with the actual melody of the song, and then I'll figure out okay, where is the range? Where what's the melody at? It would be so, okay, how can I make this in a very, like, musical way, too? And be like... more familiar we, you get mm -hmm. with the progression and you know with the feeling with the rhythm mm -hmm. the more confident you're gonna be able to start exploring different things you know with yeah. the knowledge that you have so I love doing that you that, know that's such a great explanation and I think I think something important to for everyone to remember is that taking chords and then building something on your own there are m many tiny steps that you can take to get more comfortable and one shouldn't jump into it hearing some s s amazing solo yeah. and trying to emulate that first because mm. if you go from that end without understanding what's underneath, oh, yeah. then you end up playing just a lot of filler. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, hear a lot actually. <laughs> yeah, no, that's you know. true. I mean, for me, like, even if you're just playing one exercise, you know, a regular pentatonic run or scale, I just try to make that as most musical as possible. Because yeah. again, at the end of the day, what's the point of us practicing scale runs four hours a day, I don't know, if we don't make that in a music, you know, musical, you know, yeah. there's no point. It's just for our selfish, you know, pleasure. I'm just like, yeah, cool, yeah. I know how to play this. But okay, like, how can you make that into a musical thing, a musical path? So for me, I mean, every little thing, you know, it could be just like a simple exercise. Of course, it's not every time that it becomes that accurate, but I just try to m incorporate this in a way that, okay, how can I make this to fit in a song yeah. sort of approach, you know? So when you're deciding to cover a song or make an arrangement of something, how do you decide what settings? Are you experimenting with it constantly mm. and then you're like, oh, this feels right? Or do you already know, let's say before we played today, mm -hmm. do you, did you already have an idea of what sound would work well with piano and so you already uh -huh. have the effects mapped out and yeah. which guitar, everything? Yes, yeah, sort of. I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, you have to try things and yeah. see what fits the best. But in that situation for us, I, you know, there's another instrument and 
I have to understand where like the piano fits in the EQ system. So we're kind of like, mm -hmm. I mean, piano just has so many, the range of the EQ is just so abrupt. So um, for me, it, I think it was very ideal to go for a more like a crystalline kind of sound. And mm -hmm. I think like having a guitar like this would be the most ideal. Of course, the song we played was a ballad, so more like a, you know, laid back kind of sound. So the more clean, the cleaner the sound, the better. So mm -hmm. not too many, too much distortion. And um, well, it's kind of like for you, I would say, like if you want to play like a very, I mean, of course you could be able to do that on a, on a piano, but sometimes if you want to get that sort of melancholic, like melancholic sound, you go play like a electric piano, you know, like mm -hmm. a Rhodes with the mm -hmm, mm -hmm. little vibrato mm -hmm. thing and you just have the long notes going, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So for me, again, you have to think in every, little detail in the context and uh, for our situation the fact that we performed this ballad sort of song very like spacious mm -hmm. ethereal sound so I had to add more delays and reverb so we got that sustain mm -hmm. behind. I'm kind of new to delay I, I don't really know how to use it with nuance Mm -hmm. And when I was uh, experimenting with the Delverb pedal, yeah, uh, immediately I just like dialed everything, and oh, it was yeah. it was like looping myself, uh -huh. and I th I thought that was really cool. Oh yeah, and I started experimenting, and then mm -hmm. I s realized okay, that's a little overboard. Yeah, it quickly just gets chaotic. Over, yeah, and so then I started experimenting, dialing it back. Yeah, and then I got to a point where you can barely notice the delay. Yeah but it's adding something to the it sound. It does. It it's does. like a shimmer. The and I was like, oh, I've been thinking of delay in a totally different way this whole time. I was thinking of it as like an echo thing. Oh, just like the <laughs> just repetition. An echo, yeah, yeah, like a ping pong echo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering how you dial that in. I try to find this fine line where I could be able to play runs like... but it doesn't get on the way, you know what I'm saying? So like, I, you could still hear like all the notes. When I finish mm -hmm. the run, you could hear the... How do you do that? So for me, I'm using the Galax right now, which is already like a tape delay mm -hmm. and has some sort of ambience as well, like a riv reverb on it. I no mostly set my like the repetition in like a, a quarter note kind of thing. Actually, this one is a little extra, but I don't know. Let's see. Oh, this one has more movement. I have to. Yeah, like oh. in situation like that. So I'll probably quarter be like, note. yeah. <laughs> So I can have mm. that little thing, you know, like the termination of, of the, the run or the solo extends that mm -hmm. little thing. I l that's how I particularly love, but you know, guitar players could use like, for example, The Edge by mm -hmm. U2, he was using the dotted A thing that kind of incorporates that sort of cascade. Mm -hmm. In my case, I love setting something like quarter note and um, not too over, but not too much. Again, it's like that fine line of still being able to hear mm -hmm. the delay effect, but not getting too much on the way where I'm like, oh wow, this is already too much, you know? Like, and I, it's not clear enough to understand the notes. What does your guitar sound like with nothing? So it would be something like this. It's pretty naked. It's crazy. <laughs> Oh, whoa. You know what I mean? So it's very like... That's so different. It's very naked, you know? You're so 
good. It's frustrating. <laughs> no, I mean, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard because it's like, yeah, there's no makeup on, you know, but then we have this and... You see, like, how much more, like, you know, like, the, the ambience behind, you know? The good thing about it, like, I don't have to worry much about when I have the delay and the reverb on. I just don't. I don't feel. I don't feel worried about like. Oh wow, there's too much space going. You know, because it's already like I can leave the note and just be like, okay, cool. Is it like the sustained pedal of the Exactly. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Great it's analogy. In doubt. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have it, it's just like, oh my gosh, you know. Yeah. So I can still like do like the. Support. Amazing to really? hear your, your point of view as well. It's just so cool and uh, I hope we can get, you know, the chance to play more and more because I sure. just by spending this afternoon with sure. you, I'm already like, I need lessons. Oh, that's, you're telling <laughs> me. <laughs> it's so good, you know. Part two next time. Come on, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs>